Welcome back, everyone. Um, thank you for sticking with us till this moment. We have two more sessions left. And uh, next, we'll be having Lady Joseph, and he'll be talking about transforming your Jupyter notebook to a reproducible machine learning pipeline using Q. That sounds interesting. And yep, uh, let's bring Olaide up. Hi, Olaide, can you hear me? No, I can't hear you. Let me see. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, thank you. There seems to be some form of echo. Not sure where it's coming from. Um, can you mute the one with the camera? Um, yeah, it's not appearing. It's muted. Okay. I think it's better now. Okay. Thank you. So, um, okay. welcome, ladies and yeah. So, so um, sorry, <laughs> let me introduce you first. Now, so uh, Joseph is a machine learning engineer with a current focus on enterprise ML ops. He currently works as an independent ML ops consultant for cloud native ML ops organizations. He has worked with ML ops organizations like Marvin Code uh, and Aricto. Outside of machine learning, Joseph comes from an energy background, oil and gas, mm, that's the big voice. His interest uh, in energy lies in the adoption of technology to foster the energy efficient operations. Finally, Joseph likes playing games and listening to dancehall music. Mm, that's interesting. Maybe we should talk more about the dancehall music after the session. So over to you, jo uh, Joseph. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, so I'll be going over uh, transforming your Jupyter notebook to a reproducible machine learning pipeline using Kill, and I look forward to like um this session with you guys. So um, my name is Joseph Oladi, like the first host has said. Um, I currently work as a contractor, MLOps consultant with um Arikto. So Arikto is a cloud native um MLOps company um, with products like Kill and the likes. So I'll be working us through how um the Kill platform can be used to create um, reproducible machine learning pipelines. So to start with, um, let me just go over what this session is for. And if you are here, um, this session is for like data scientists and DevOps with little or no experience with Qflow. And what, what this session is about, so we're going to cover, so depending on time, so the panelists cover this a digit recognizer notebook and a telco churn notebook. So depending on time, the focus for now is on digit recognizer. So we're going to look, look, at, look out for Kubeflow notebooks, especially um, JupyterLab. Then we're going to look at the Kill JupyterLab extension with Kubeflow pipelines. So what this session is not going to cover, so this session is an in-depth machine learning or Kubernetes course, and this session is a Python programming course. So, so about the notebook we'll be converting to a reproducible machine learning pipeline. So it's the popular um, MNIST or the Digit Recognizer um, notebook. It's on cargo for everyone. So, I mean, everyone can have access to this. So about the notebook, so the, the question of this notebook um, was actually sponsored by my organization and it's an open source um, notebook. So you can actually have access to this notebook um, while I go over this um, session. So um, if you can see, this, this is the link, um, github.com, Qflow examples, three master, then under the digit recognition cargo competition. So I think I'll just wait for five seconds for people to just look out this link. Just the Kubeflow um, organization, under the Kubeflow, you go to the examples repo, under examples repo, you go to the digit recognition cargo competition directory or folder. So prerequisite for this course, um, at least little knowledge about cloud computing environments like AWS, GCP, or Azure basic understanding of cloud native um, architectures and Kubernetes concepts like pods, controllers, nodes, container images, and volumes, etc. So familiarity with ML concepts like um, algorithms, I expect um, those uh, attending the session to have like um, a good knowledge of um, machine, machine learning workflow. 
I mean, you know, I mean machine learning work for you should be able to like read your pandas. Um, you should be able to read the CSV data. You should be able to like um, do feature transformation. You should be able to do hyperparameter training, model, model training, and the like. So um, the bonus key flow as a service, bonus introduction to key flow fundamentals. That's like um, by the way. So um, let's go to key flow overview. So to start with, so obviously just give a summary of what Kubernetes is all about and why um, K or key flow K is like built on top of Kubernetes. So one of the key benefits um, Qflow K leverages from Kubernetes is the portability, microservices, and scaling. So when we talk about portability, we're talking about um, being able to like um, create a program somewhere and being able to like being able to reproduce the same program elsewhere so not having to like have environment issues or um, dependency issues so with microservices workflow for is like interacting multiple services and with kubernetes like kubernetes offers these services so we have scaling so when it comes to scaling we're talking about like being able to like scale up your computing resources or use to scale down your computing resources depending on your workload so this is like a, um, a brief overview of, um, of what Kubernetes tends to offer Qflow Q. So let's talk about Qflow itself and what Qflow does. So Qflow is an open source project at the convergence of cloud native and ML. So Qflow is, an, is a MLOps platform for data science and operations team. It's a complete toolkit for an ML workflow, including data, model training, hyperparameter tuning, model saving, and model monitoring. So Qflow was launched by Google in 2017 it started, as, uh, it started at Google as a way to like externalize the TensorFlow Extend Experience (TFX), and it is Apache 2.0 licensed. So, what challenges does, does Kubo aim to solve? So, basically, Kubo aims to solve um, aims to like make your deployment of machine learning workflow on Kubernetes simple, portable, and scalable. So, the idea is that we know that Kubernetes has this um, orchestration power, this portability power, and this auto scaling power already. So, um, how can we leverage this um, power to like um, so how can we leverage this part to make our deployment of machine learning workflows very easy? So the, which is where Qflow comes into play. So Qflow makes our data loading, verification, splitting, processing, feature engineering, upper parameter tuning, up on to observation and monitoring, very, very easy. So we're going to go over um, the different um, tools and how Qflow is like the um, all-in-one um, platform to do this and why it's like um, it's best to use um, Qflow. So um, basically, typically if you want to do your model building, you, you do it on Jupyter, you do it on Databricks, RCD, or, or Visual Studio Code. Qflow offers you all this all in one. So if you want to do your model training, you probably use Python, SQLite, or TensorFlow. Qflow also offers this to you. If you want to do a par parameter tuning, you probably use Sigup, Determined AI, or any scale. Qflow also does this for auto ML analysis, ML pipelines, metadata tracking, and deployment. So Qflow offers all this all in one. So it's just like your all in one ML pipeline. So, so let's talk about the key flow architecture. So basically, in this um, session, this workshop, we're going to um, use the following components in Qflow. We're going to use the Jupyter Notebook. We're going to use Qflow pipelines. We're going to use operators, and we'll be looking at the central dashboard. So to go over um, notebook, so basically, Qflow has um, a notebook feature, which gives you the same Jupyter notebook-like feel. Um, the same Jupyter lab um, you have in your local computer, the same Google Lab like field you have in your um, cloud internet um, IDE. So Google, Google Notebook offers you the same set of um, features. So we have um, we have Jupyter Lab, R Studio, and Visual Studio Code embedded in Qflow Notebook server, so you can run any of these um, IDEs to carry out your machine learning workflows using Qflow Notebooks. So um, we all have an idea of what Jupyter Lab is, but um, a lot of us are probably training Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab, so I won't really go in detail as to what Jupyter Lab is all about. So it's basically just a web-based environment for creating Jupyter Notebooks. That's it. So um, Jupyter Lab in Kubeflow. So to go to the pipeline basics. So um, the, the core focus of this session is to talk about um, reproducible machine, how to create reproducible machine learning pipelines. So before I go into how to create reproducible machine learning pipelines, what exactly is like um, this pipeline itself? So a pipeline is basically a description of an ML workflow that includes all of the components in the workflow and how they combine in the form of an execution graph. So basically a pipeline is basically like um, your end-to-end -end, um, machine learning process as uh, tasks or as steps, for example, 
if you would like, if I um okay, just like so if you would like to like create your ML, if, if you'd like to like, go through a, a typical model development cycle, a typical machine learning development cycle, you're probably going to start from like your data ingestion or your or we call it data loading. And after data loading, you probably want to do like feature transformation, or you you could want to like clean the data. After clean data, you do feature transformation. After feature transformation, you want to do model training. After model training, you probably want to do hyperparameter parameter tuning afterwards, or you could do hyperparameter parameter tuning while doing your model training, depending on which, whichever works for you. Then you want to do like model seven last, then model monitoring. So in Kipo pipelines, you get to define all these things as steps. So at the end of the day, when you um when you define all these different steps, it comes out in form of like an execution graph, but they're connected to each other. So you, before, so for your data loading, um you could for before you get to your, you start from a data loading. From a data loading, you get to your cleaning data step. From your cleaning data step, you get to your feature transformation step. From a feature transformation step, you get to your model training step. And after your model training step, you get to your model seven step, depending on um, whichever workflow you would like to um, build. So Keep4 Pipelines offers you this uh, feature. So in Q4 pipeline, each steps are defined as component, pipeline components. And what is the pipeline component? Basically, a pipeline component is basically just a set of codes designed to perform a particular task. So a pipeline component, an example of a pipeline component could be a data loading component. So what a data loading component does basically is just, um, just perform data loading operations. An example of a pipeline um, component is a model training component. What the model training component does is um, it carries out model training, that's all. So, um, Pipeline components are self-contained sets of user codes packaged up as, doc as Docker images and the performance step in the pipeline. So components may run serially or in parallel based on the way these pipelines are defined and we'll get to see all this in the hands-on example. So Kiflo pipeline design goes, we have orchestration, experimentation and reusability. So we'll get to like experience all this in the pipeline. I think let me see what's time. Okay, sorry, I'm going to Okay. So what's included in the Kubeflow pipeline UI? So you have like what's included in Kubeflow exactly? You have like a UI. So the UI um, is similar to what is at my right hand here. Um, you, have, you have like your own notebook, tensor boards, models, snapshot, volumes, experiments, pipeline runs, recurring runs, artifacts, and execution. So with the help of um, SDKs, we are able to uh, with the help of like Kubeflow SDKs, we are able to actually create pipelines that can run that can run and appear in the UIs. Um, okay, I did talk about the component, packaging a component. This is an example of a Kubeflow pipeline, like just like an example. So you can see this is, um, this is for the Chicago taxi trip data sets. It's a popular data set used in most Google tutorials. So basically, um, this is like data ingestion process. Um, there's, there's the pandas transform data frame into a CSV format. There's the remove data format. So basically, these are all these, Things are checked out, all um, steps or components whereby they perform a particular task or they perform a particular operation. So basically, what SGBoost train does, like it trains an SGBoost model. What SGBoost predict does, yes, it predicts on an SGBoost model. What calculate the regression matrix from CSV does, yes, basically let's calculate regression matrix. So we get to actually see all these things um, live in the hands-on um, technical session. So let me check this see how far we to go gap okay, is just 14 minutes can okay, i take our experiments um i hope i'm um, communicating can you hear me so basically this is um experiments keep play experiments so basically an experiment is a workspace where you can try different configuration of pipelines for some of us uh, um, familiar with MLOps, we all, and for those that are not familiar with MLOps, I'll try to like just um, explain these things. So basically an experiment is like whereby you, when you, like typically let's say you, you train a model with um, certain parameters. Let's say I train a model with um, A is equal to five, B is equal to six, and C is equal to 10. So the moment I change, the moment I change it to like A is equal to seven, A is equal to nine, and C is equal to like 20 and I run it like I've generated a new experiment. So basically an experiment is where you, you're able to like implement new set of ideas and you still get, you still get to keep the pipeline workflow the same and you get like um, different results. An example here is like, um, if you can see this image, so this is an open version um, project. 
So different um, experiments were created for the same set of um, workflow. So we have like pipeline run. So basically a run is a single execution of a pipeline. So the moment you are done compiling, the moment you are done creating your pipeline and you compile and run it, so you get a, sing a, a pipeline run. So a pipeline run is a single execution of your pipeline. So all these things, are, although it might seem like a little bit overwhelming at the moment, um, you get to see it hands on with the simple um, digital organizer um, notebook. So recurring runs, in recurring runs, basically you're trying to like, um, repeat a particular run. Let's say like you ran it like last week or or let's say you're trying to like schedule um run. Let's say okay um, I want the run to like perform weekly. So with the recurring run feature um I get to like uh, implement this and this is actually uh, very important in continuous training um projects or continuous training um workflows. Let, let's say um you expect your data sets you expect new set of data sets to come in weekly so i mean with the help of the recurring run i don't need to like recreate new notebooks or recreate new pipelines recurring run helps me with this so this uh um, we'll get to go over this so this was uh this is basically um a, a step and or you can call it a pipeline component so it performs this is the load data step pre process data step model training step model evaluation step um, so I'll be going over the hands-on session now. So let me go over, I'm going over the hands-on session now. So first of all, before you can actually create this type of pipeline, you need to have Kubeflow installed. And this, there are different ways to install Kubeflow. You can install Kubeflow via a package distribution, you can install Kubeflow via manifest. Or you can install Kubeflow via Kubeflow as a service. Um, this is what I, I use, like I'm um, training my Kubeflow pipelines or my Kill pipelines. So um, I would, to for those of us that are new to the for those of us that have not um, what Kubeflow as a service is all about, probably need to like just go to Kubeflow, um, the Aristo.com. I think I probably registered. So you probably need to go to Kubeflow the Arito um, Let's see. Arito um, Kubeflow the service. Okay, this is it. Um, you can launch, launch a Q free Kubeflow cluster using um Kubeflow as a service. So I mean, you could just use it to try your hands on like um sample notebooks that you have that you want to convert into pipelines. So for me, I've done that already, and I mean, the, it's the the note um, the website um, has a very good UI and UX that kind of explain things well. So you should be able to like create this um, free service to use. To back to. So there are different. Like I said um, Qflow um package Qflow distribution. So is that you install Qflow on? AWS, you install your Kubeflow cluster on AWS, you install it on, on Google Cloud, Azure, or other services. So the idea is that since Kubeflow works on the um, leverages Kubernetes for its operation, so before you can install Kubeflow, you need Kubernetes to be installed. So um, we have um, AKS, Azure Kubernetes um, service, we have um, GKE, Google Kubernetes Engine, and we have EKS, that's for, um, that's for um, AWS. So um, if you go to the Kubeflow documentary, or if, if you go to the, if you go to the Kifu documentation, um, I think it's quite easy. I don't know Kifu documentation website by that. So I could just Google this Kifu documentation and I find myself here. On that documentation, I'll probably click on um, installing Kubeflow and it should be able to um, it should be able to get me started. Let me see, I think this was directing me. Installing Kubeflow, so yeah. These are like different ways you can install Kubeflow. So there are different docs that can guide you through um, installing Kubeflow. Let's say you don't want to use Kubeflow as a service um, platform, you can go through this route. So this is Kubeflow as a service which I'll be using now. Um, I think, okay, let me just go back and do this sign myself. Um, start with Kubeflow. 
Yeah, launch it for free. Um, if you have your system with you, you can probably walk through this process as well. So if you don't have an account, you can sign up. So um, we have an account um, next. Then, yeah, this should work. Receive a code. So I'm coming out. I'd have to like check this. Check my phone for. Again, I guess the code. I guess it's so. Let me just do it after verify receive a voice call instead. Okay, I think I got the voice call. Okay, so um, I just got a call from the code. So if you can, um, can you guys can you guys still hear me? Um, sorry, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. So um once you've created the Qflow as a service, um so it brings you here, all you need to do is create a new Qflow deployment. So I do have something running. But I mean the website is um quite explanatory and it should you should be able to like um create this. So currently I have like um seven days left. So Qflow as a Qflow as a service gives me like um two weeks free of um this, like I mean try my pipeline runs and oh. So my username is user and my password is my password. So you guys have to like, um, you also get yours and you log in. So once you do that, it, it brings you to like um, a Qflow, it brings you to a Qflow um, UI. And I think I would like to open this in an incognito page so it doesn't tamper with my, um, So can you still see the UI? Okay. So um, this is the notebook. So I do have a notebook server created. So what I'll just do is I'll go through the process and create a new notebook server. So I'm going to delete the one I had before. I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to delete some experiments I had before running to create space. Okay, I think it's delete now. Let me delete some snapshots I had. Um, Yes, let me do some snapshots I had. So um yeah, delete. Um this book. So I'm currently on um a new notebook. So my name, let me just call it um KCD KCD um so I'm using Jupyter Lab, so I'm probably going to leave it at Jupyter Lab. If I was to use Jupyter, if I was to use Jupyter, um, if I was to use Visual Studio Code, I'll probably like pick Jupyter. I'll probably pick Visual Studio Code or R Studio, whichever one works for me. Okay, yeah. Um, set my CPU requirements. Um, let's say I, I want um two. Um, and I want to big RAM so and to CPU calls. So um my ROM um I could set this to um 10 um 10 big ROM and I think that's that's all. 
see you launch. So this shouldn't take up to a minute. So while we wait for this to load, so I think um if you are with your laptop, you can probably just go through this with me. Or if you like, um, since it's recorded, you probably get get it um, later. So I mean, I'm going to go to this website, this GitHub repo, and I'm going to clone it. So let me just show you where I'm going to. So this is like an open source rep. I contributed to this and yeah. So what I want to work on is the kill Jupyter lab, the kill um digital recognizer notebook. So I'm just going to clone this repo. Copy link address. This is it. Okay, just launch. I'm going to connect. Um, so after connecting, I'm going to open a terminal. Let's open a terminal. So this is like the same Jupyter Lab environment you get um, in, on your local computer. So git clone, for examples. So I'll I'll go to I'll go to um, the digit recognition notebook, which is this. Now open the kill notebook, which is this. I have a, so this is um the digital digit recognizer kill pipeline notebook. So I'll just um, I would walk us through um the notebook. So basically it's just a markdown that just talks about what kind of competition is all about. And yeah, so to be able to create these pipelines, I need to like um so basically this notebook server I have here, the notebook server I created via the cluster, it's just like an empty environment. It doesn't have any um it just has um just Python environment installed. So it doesn't have some libraries installed. So I need to go through the process of um, installing some libraries I would want to use. And the libraries I would want to use for this notebook, I, I would need TensorFlow, Seaborn, WGET, and Pandas. Since if that's, since that's the case, um, let me walk through it. So I'm going to install, I've saved it in the requirements.txt file. So I'm going to install it. I'm going to um, pass the required um, flag because I'm to see all those um, standard outputs. So after installing um, the, it should take uh, probably two minutes to like install. After installing, I'm going to like um, import all the necessary libraries. So to now work with Q, uh, to, to work with QFlow Q, this is like where the magic um, comes into play. I would like well, I would like it if um, if you've not been paying attention before. I think just probably just try um, as much as possible to like um, concentrate here. So um, while I'm waiting for this to install, I'll I'll click on this kill extension here. So if you have um, if you are using um the Qflow as a service um um this thing cluster, you'd have the Qflow pipeline deployment panel or the kill deployment panel here. So like, you just click on it. You click on it, it opens, you enable the pipe, you enable the panel. So after enabling the panel, you have to just okay, if you've not created an experiment before, you click on new experiment, you pass in your experiment name. In my case, it is digit recognizer kill. The pipeline name is digit digit recognizer kill as well. So this is description, it performs processing, training, and there right, training and prediction of digits. So um the moment I enable the kill deployment panel. Um, you see like the notebook changes. You are seeing some tags there like skip, imports, um, pipeline parameters and the likes. So I'm going to just explain what these things are. So the the beauty of um, Kale is that it, it actually um, gives you the opportunity to like create components straight up from your note notebook. Like you don't need to write um, extra codes or you don't need to um, do any um, extra. You just need to just enable the Kale deployment panel, create an experiment, come here, you see this like, um, this um this pencil sign, you click on it, it tells you what kind of cell should this be. So basically, since I've already installed um the libraries, I don't need to pass this into my Qflow pipeline again because I don't need to I don't I don't want to always um install these libraries every time I every time I um run the pipeline. Since it has been installed already in my notebook server, Kel is going to pick it up and you don't have to stress yourself about inst always installing it every time you want to create a pipeline. So since I've installed, I'm going to have to skip the cell. So to skip the cell, you just you click on this, 
and click on skip cell. From the word skip cell, just keep the notebook cell. Don't don't um don't perform this operation. Just keep it. Then uh, I'm going to have to import my um, libraries. So always make it a habit to ensure like all your imports are in one place. So it makes scale like be able to like um, understand like some of the libraries better. So when you when you call them or you want when you want to use them down the line in your machine learning development um, process. So basically, um, you click on this, you pass in all your imports, you click on import. From the word import, just everything you're trying to import into the notebook, just pass it here. Then for my pipeline um, parameters, so pipeline parameters are basically um, parameters that the pipeline uses or several components can use. For example, now I could use the batch size in multiple places. So far, I've, I've passed it as a pipeline parameter. So several components can use my pipeline parameter. It's like a global variable now in Python. So basically, I pass my pipeline parameter. This is like the parameter I want my um, I want my pipeline to always um, have access to. Every component should always have access to this. If if I choose to use it, if I don't choose, it, I just want it to be there. So. My pipeline parameters typically are usually my like like my upper parameters. So I have like learning rate for short for LR, epochs, batch size, um, conversation dimension one, conversation dimension two. So I pass that. So I also set like um random seed, but in this case I, I set it to like skip it. So I like I don't want this to go into my um pipeline um graph. Imagine like me having a graph that says like okay, set random seed like it's not really um doesn't really look nice i mean you could do it if you want to but i didn't just i didn't do it it's a choice so i skipped the cell so now let's now go to like creating a pipeline step itself so everything we've been talking so far have been things like i've been adding towards skill and let's talk about the codes itself that perform these tasks which is the pipeline component so to create a pipeline component in kill it's very very easy and it's as easy as this you have like specific commands that are like that perform download data so what I want to do is like I want to download this data from my GitHub from the Keyflow GitHub um, repo. So I pass in the data link. I import the big get and zip file. I come to this um, pencil button, click on it. I pass in the step name, which is download data. So when you click on, okay, I click on pipeline step. So it tells me to pass in the step name and its dependency. So basically, when I, when what it means by dependencies, yes, uh, which other steps is this um, step depending on? Since this is the first step in my uh, pipeline workflow, it doesn't depend on anything, and so I just leave that place bound. So um, this is like my uh, my source code that downloads um, this um, the train data, test it, and the sample submission data. So um, in case if you are wondering how the source code is all about, you can just check this, this is the source code here from this GitHub repo. Um, you can play around with it, and you can create new ones yourself. This is source code. So everything that you're seeing me doing now is, is in this GitHub repo for your use. So um, yeah, this is the download data step. So next stop is the load data step. So okay, after download data, I want to load data into CSV. Pandas um unload this unload data into like um load the CSV data into pandas as a data and uh, as a data loads it and output as a data frame. So to do that, I'll click on this pencil sign. I'll come here, click on pipeline step. Passing the step name load data dependency, it depends on download data. So what this just means is that like, I mean, it's going to load what the download data has downloaded. So you see why I'm this this kind of interconnected anyway. So I mean, the download data that doesn't depend on anything, it downloads data. So that's like an ingestion process. Typically, if you're working in an enterprise, like what you want to do is like um, there's usually like a storage, probably like um AWS bucket, Azure Blob storage, or Google Cloud um, bucket. Or let's say there's a feature store somewhere that um that you load this data from, more like a data ingestion process. So this load data depends on what the download data downloads. So I mean I read the data from I read the data, the CSV data from what the data download data step are downloaded, and this is it. So the beauty of Kelly is that multiple notebook cells can can have a single um multiple notebooks can have a single pipeline step, can be under a single pipeline step. For example, this the case here is, um, this is the load data step. If I call me, this is also the load data step. This is also the load data step. If you can read this, it, it says leave the step name empty to merge the cell to step load data. So basically you can 
made multiple sales to a single pipeline step. So the next next um, pipeline step I have is pre-processed data. So it's as easy as I just come into this page so I can click on this, go to pipeline step, click on pipeline step, come to the step name, enter pre-processed data, it's dependency. So to pre-process data, I need what has been loaded. So it depends on the load data. It doesn't depend on the download data, it depends on the load data. So the load data information gets passed to the pre-process data. The pre-process data step mixes up the loaded, the loaded data so like carrier transformations and, and all. So then after the pre-process data, it's time for me to do my modeling. So for the modeling, so the modeling, you, you, you come here just like I did previously, you come to the cell type, you click on pipeline step, come to the step name, you click, um, you type in modeling or whatever mod, um, model name of your child, whatever model you feel, whatever name you feel like giving it. It depends on the pre-process data. So the pre-process data gets passed into the modeling step. So yeah, why just did I create like my model? It's a TensorFlow um, convol it's a convolutional model. So this is um, my modeling step. Um, I have several notebook cells passed under my modeling step. This is my compilation. Because of time, um, I set it to like um, was let me check the number of epochs. I set it to okay. I set it to just two epochs. Take note. So basically, what I just did in the for my for the parameters I passed into the pipeline parameters before I pass them into my notebook cells, I, I, I tell the notebook what type of um, data type it is. In this case, while I was compiling, my learning rate is, is of float is of data type floats. And um, for some of us, um, if we are of Python background, we know what float is, or yeah, we know what float is in general. So this is like the decimals. So my learning rate is of type floats. My my batch size is of type integer. My epoch is of type integer. So I, I just pass it there, and the notebook understands this. So the next step after modeling is, is the prediction step. So I just try to make this as um, simple as possible. And um, when it's time for the Q and A, can ask questions. So the next step is the prediction um, step. So the prediction step depends on the modeling. So basically, what is being passed to the prediction step is the model that is the model that has been fit uh, has been fitted already. So it's a fitted model, and I make it as a fitted model to like carry out predictions. And after my predictions, I get confusion metrics out of this. Um, I believe we all have an idea of what confusion metric is all about. After that, um, yeah, so I just um, plot my confusion matrix so I'll be able to like, visualize it in the UI. So that's all about the, um, that's all about the creation of pipeline. Let, let's see this um, coming to actualization. So once you've done all this, this is also the sub submission code. I have I skipped it because I'm not submitting anything to anywhere. So you can just skip this cell. So compile, when you're done, just click on compile and run. So what code does is it validates the notebook and it checks if your codes are correct. Once you see it, check down if your codes are correct. And it takes snapshots. So basically the snapshot, what kill offers is like once you've um once you've created, once you've created the notebook, it saves all the information, all the working environment, the storage inside your notebook server. It saves it inside Q. In the event that okay, let's say you want to use it next month, you want to use it in two months' time, it is this information is already backed up for you. So once you're once um once you're done, you, you get this view, whether you can view what your pipeline, how your pipeline is running. So, um, so I would want this to actually appear like on, to view the actual pipeline, I think this is it, it should be here. Okay. So to feed the actual pipeline, so what it does is it creates um it creates um a volume first. After creating the volume, you see the download data step. So download data step is running. So when download data step is done, you're going to get the load data step. When load data step is done, you're going to get the um, pre-processed data step. When the pre-processed data step is done, you're going to get the 
modeling data step. When the modeling data step is done, you're going to get the prediction data step, which is the final step, and you have your um, pipeline um, graph. So um, once I see this beauty, it shows like the um, it shows the pipeline is now um, running. The, it shows the download data step is now running, and this should take about ten minutes um, in total. So I think um, I can afford questions now. While we wait for um, this run to like um, finish. So basically, the idea of this pipeline is that like I mean. You, you want this process, um, it, it, since it's, it's built under Kubernetes, um, in the event that like you're training something with a very huge workload, like um, it has the auto scaling feature because it leverages um, um, Kubernetes, like to scale up based on computing resources and based on computing needs. Another feature of this pipeline is that let's say you want to perform a continuous training um, operation for some of us that are from MLS background, for some of us that are trying to get into like an MLS background, um, you can create a pipeline that goes into like, you can create a pipeline that the output is a model that goes into a model registry. So depending on how you, um, I mean, this is like enterprise MLOps. So the download data step is completed. Um, where this is load data step, we have to wait for the load data step as well. So basically like, as I was saying, Probably the output of your pipeline typically probably is a model that goes into a model registry. And thank, thankfully for Kill, Kill also has like hyperparameter tuning features. However, the, um, the focus of this um, session is not on hyperparameter or model saving or the like, just on pipeline creation. Possibly like some other time, talk about um, um, model saving with Kill or Kill Flow. We'll talk about hyperparameter, hyperparameter tuning using Kill or Kill Flow. So if you have a question, like you, we can start asking now. Before we're done, the pipeline has been um put up completed. So I think that's like that's all. If you have a question, you can start asking now. Um, hello, sorry, can you can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I think we have a question. Is there a kill extension for Colab? Okay, so um, Colab is not built on um, Kubernetes. It's not built on top of Kubernetes, so um, that won't be possible. So there's no kill extension on Colab. Okay. I think there's another question on how you can join the community, although I'm not sure if it's case, um, KCB community or the Kill community. Okay, so um, the Kill community is still the, um, the CNCF community called Native One, called um, CNCF community. So I feel like um, typically there's a Kill Flow Slack. Um, you could probably just Google. I think let me see if I could Google this. Um, keep the Slack channel. Um, keep the Slack channel. I'm in already, so I just hope it doesn't direct me to what I'm in. Okay, so this is keep the Slack channel. You could Google this, and the first thing that comes up is community um, bar Qflow. Click on it, and it should direct you to how you should be able to join the official Qflow cha um, Slack channel. Um, I hope. This is helpful. So this should, should be able to like get um a lot of this information there. Um let's go, let's go to the pipeline. So the load data step is completed. We're going to pre-process data step. So are there more questions or that's all. so at the end of the day, your pipeline should look like something like this, which we would get to see. So your pipeline should be like something like this, something like this. Um, 
you have like the create volume, download data, load data, reprocess data, modeling, prediction. So let's let me get get out to this. This is it. So while this is um okay, process data is completed. So modeling, second to the last pronouncement step. Let me copy this so you could you could see the results live. Um Um, so if you can hear me, I'm trying to like log in um, to like my private browser. So um, the display could like come out in full. So if you got, um, I'm going to stop sharing now. I'm going to like request for access there. So I mean, so everyone could see like the full pipeline. Um, can you see my can, can you see my screen? It's coming up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So like, this is the full pipeline. So the beauty of of Kill again is that you could actually see some of the things you are doing. There are no visualizations. Okay. Yeah, you could see some of the things you are doing, like the model training strip. Um, okay. Let me see. Okay, I don't know the test up should have something. Okay, yeah. For example, some of the sorry, I think it's it's echoing. Is it for myself? Lady, if you are speaking, I'm not sure we can hear you. The um output of your notebook here, just as it is in your, just as it is in your notebook. Like when I call the dot add operation here, dot add method, it's still the same thing I'm going to see here. When I call the dot shape method, it's still the same thing I'm going to see here. And the modeling operation, I think I should see the model training step. Probably when it's done, you would get to see it. So it's just your entire notebook. Like, I mean, you don't get to like stress over, or oh, I need to like do some things to like turn this into a pipeline. Like it's your entire notebook, the same way you have it in your collab, the same way you have it in your Jupyter lab. Like you just upload it here and turn it to a pipeline. So typically if you um, do this with the, um, Keyflow SDK, the traditional Keyflow SDK, you would need to like write some components individually, and you would need to like um, run some methods, create clients, compile, and unlike this, where I just have my notebook, I don't need to stress about that, and all I need to just click things, type things, click things, type things, and yeah, I have a pipeline. And pipeline is actually very critical when you um when you want like a reproducible ML workflow because. Every time I run this, I'm always going to get the steps. Like every time I run, I'm always going to get the steps. I could 
take this um I, I could take this step um on somebody's uh on someone's like key flow cluster different from mine i'm still gonna get the same thing i could pass the output of my step to like a model registry still gonna be the same thing so like uh this is like the this uh, the beauty of um uh, machine learning um on kubernetes uh we machine learning leveraging kubernetes um orchestration, orchestration abilities scaling um, abilities or capabilities and um the portability um capability so this is like my the output of my from my notebook like the model the summary this is like the training step and the last one is supposed to like show me my confusion matrix so there are still other um features which i which i didn't get to like show into this session um there are ways in which you could like output like um pipeline parameters for for some of us want to do experiment tracking like you want to like be able to like compare different um, pipeline metrics um I want to, let's say um initially i ran my first experiment i got like 90 percent and i'm not running it i'm getting like 89 percent i want to be able to like track these changes so these are some of the features you can also like get from like your pipelines and Qflow in general so let me see if i have something i've trained in the past okay let me go to experiment so these are this is like the run ui so these are some of my fields um experiments are passed the field experiments uh, let me see experiment good experiment so basically you get to see um the metrics here you get to be able to like compare these different metrics and you get to, like be able to like rerun the metrics the desired um the desired pipeline let's say you run about 10 different pipelines and you you want to pick the best um one based on your own these are some of the things that um, you would want to like take into consideration but that's not like um the scope of this um session so we won't be going over that but these are some of the things you could do with you could do like experiment tracking you could do like um pipeline um pipeline orchestration with teach you could do model serving with kubeflow you could run distributed training with kubeflow and yeah i think that's it so we have our pipeline run completed so that's how to like create the Pipe and machine learning pipeline using Q. That's all. So this is the visualization. And this is my confusion matrix. So that's all. It's a few questions you can update directly. Thank you, Olaide, for that awesome section. If you have um, any questions for Olaide so far, you can either drop it in the chat or you can also check him up on the, his social media handles where you can ask further questions just in case you're unable to get your response here. <laughs> 